Welcome back to Wayne Acres. Today is April 5th and we're going to be doing a property tour. We haven't done any property tours yet. We've just been doing greenhouse and food forest tours. So this will be encompassing the entire property. I'm going to go pretty quick because I'm not going to try and name every little thing we have here, but I want to kind of get the gist of each area. So you have an idea of what I'm working with there. We're going to start here at the, out at the south end of the property. This is where we just put in an oak tree that we transplanted from behind one of our carports. This oak is now the south end property corner and so is that pine tree down there. We just had the property surveyed so now we know where the line is. Down here in the middle I had a sunflower row last year but it seems to be right on the line so this year when we had it tilled I had them come in a little farther and do a bigger sunflower row so now I have nice probably six foot by hundred foot area for my all the sunflowers down here we have a tricolored dappled willow that the deer kind of beat up there's one on the mirror image side down there other end of the sunflower row we're going to have to bring these in a couple feet to be on the property, but they seem to still be having some growth even though they got some damage. Now this area tends to flood a little bit, wash out whenever we get some heavy rains. That poorly designed dam fills up with water and it just flows straight into our yard. So when we dig the pond, we're going to have some extra soil and dirt. And we're going to build a mound right there on the back of the sunflower row to help guide the water out and away down the hill along the east side of the property there we have the pine tree i think in this gap i'm going to be putting two thujas to blo block that in a little bit then we got the two hemlocks and i have three spruce over there but the middle spruce got beat up by a buck rub this year so i'm not sure that one's going to make it might have to switch that one out now up here on the west side of the property just towards the corner of the barn here, I have a, a tulip poplar that it's dead. So we got it, I planted it out here last year in the spring and the frost got it immediately. Had a real late frost. So I need to get a new tulip poplar, but that's gonna be going here, which is another corner. We have a lot of corners on the property because we don't have a square lot, but this will be another corner tree so our property line runs pretty much straight there and i want to take this line and put norway spruce all the way down to that oak tree between the tula poplar and the oak tree and then probably on the inside of that line put a deciduous row for some fall color but that'll be down the road a little bit up here behind the barn just up from that tulip poplar. We'll be coming up here and putting some more trees in. The first one I have in here is an ash tree. I got this in, I think it's the second season. So it's just really rooting in now. And then you see that maple tree right there in front of us. That was beside the oak tree behind the carport. So we pulled that one out with that oak. And this is where we put the maple not a property corner it's just inside the property corner because there's a hole here and there's a hole there that I'm gonna be putting a gold rider Leland Cypress in hopefully they survived in the garage and then I have a Thuja green giant here as the property corner nice uh, should be a little bit more columnar shape so it's not going to be hanging over the property any should just be a nice post so we know where the line is down this way like i said this hole will be a golden golden rider leland cypress and then we have i think they're cypress trees another type of cypress it's a large type of arborvitae i'm not sure what they are but they should grow about 25 feet wide up here and at least 40 feet tall i'd imagine so we have them up here to block the wind from the west side of the property. On the north side of the barn, I have a climbing rose. It's a nice, I believe, five petal red rose. It's not a 
tight-knit rows like a lot of the English varieties, but put it here, maybe I can get a trellis going up the barn and it'll be able to be visible from the yard. We'll see, that was a Mother's Day gift, so try and keep it alive. This beautiful stick of a tree is a royal empress, Palawonian tomatosa. It is a one-year-old tree. I started this from seed in December of 2019, so it only had one growing season from seed to 12, 13 feet. That's a fast-growing tree. Flanking the empress, I have another thuja and thuja because this is very dark. Why is this so dark? Okay, so that is a thuja green giant flanking both ends of the royal empress because this is another property corner where a barn kind of sits in a little jut out. So that's another corner. Going down the fence line here, I have four more Thuja Green Giants planted and then a Leland Cypress that seems to be struggling. This beautiful blob is a holly bush. I'm trying to get it to round out a little bit because you can see it's a little wild, but the birds love to nest in here and the dogs love chasing them, so I do like this bush. Beside that is a mature poplar tree. Makes a little bit of mess in the fall, but other than that, very low maintenance. This is a replacement for one of the hemlocks that fell down. We ended up putting in a, this is an eastern red cedar we plugged in here. It seems to stay a little wet over in this area, so it had to be something that could handle that. I believe this should get some berries on it, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But this privet here does get berries on it. And this is a pretty large privet doing real well. This hemlock needed to be tied up. I don't know if you can see that straight line rope. Let's see if I can come in on that. This rope is tied to that maple, holding it up. As you can see, it's leaning pretty good. Most of the wind comes from this direction, so. Underneath that silver maple is my food forest. Won't talk about that right now because we're on a property tour, not a food forest tour, huh puppy? Come on, buddy. Going down this west side of the property, we have hemlocks that I need to prune down and I need to probably tighten them up so they're a little bit shorter and stockier. Another privet in between with an oak and a smaller privet here. We had another privet actually planted right here, but this is now a Rosa Sharon. We had the Rosa Sharon transplanted from over by the trailer where we we're going to be putting in another carport. So it had to be relocated and this was a pretty good spot for it. This Norway spruce over here was just transplanted as well. And you can see, look at all those roots in the stalk from a dead hemlock. I'll show you where that fell down later. Like I was saying, this Norway spruce is just put here. Tried to keep it on a little bit of a mound. Come here, puppy. And this is where I keep my wood chips and my compost and my manure. Behind me is a Rosa Sharon hedge that I put in two years ago with my dad. And there's four green emerald arborvitaes just inside those to make a block against the neighbors, but I don't want to go over there because they're sitting on their porch right now and I don't want to talk to them or in front of them. This is our storage trailer and this will be going away here soon. We're going to be getting this everything out of here and building a new, putting a new carport right on the side of this carport for everything that's in there. This beautiful specimen tree behind me is a blue spruce from Maine, from Maine, and it is gorgeous color.
didn't seem to get the blight like the Colorado blue spruce that we had, so that's nice. On the other side of that trailer is another Rosa Sharon hedge. It's just, I put that there just to continue the hedge. We have Rosa Sharon's all behind the carport here, so when you drive along the road in the summer, that's a nice colorful summer bloom. This area is the pergola. I use this pergola for gourds mainly and some flowering vines on the front. The first vine here on the right post is a silver lace vine and it's running up a channel of dura wall just to help help it climb up the wooden post. There's one of my birdhouse gourds I made for last year. This next post is holding a evergreen honeysuckle. Don't remember what color it is. We put these all these vines in last year right at right before 4th of July, I think. The top of this is layered with cattle panel, all puzzle pieced up there to fit nicely. We went and used all the thick wood, 2x6s, 4x6s, and 4x4s to build this, and 2x10s and 12s. And it's a very sturdy pergola. I went ahead and put all the uh, solar lights on top, stained it a nice cedar color, and it really works out great. All the lattice around the sides are all screwed in and has the rebar. You can see the rebar weaved through the lattice here to make it a little bit more rigid, doesn't blow in the wind. Now I saved this third post, it's empty you can see, because I saved that for an annual, a different annual every year. Another birdhouse gourd. And this Durawall track has a red trumpet vine on it, but I don't know if it's alive. I don't see any growth on it yet, so it's either real slow or dead. Might have to replace that. Beside the pergola, I have another beautiful hemlock. This thing's just massive. And it is the background, I guess, for a large bed of dahlias. The whole bed is full of mostly red dahlias. I think the green flags have some purple dahlias on them. And then I have some blue hyacinths and some white daffodils. You can't see the daffodils now because they got all sad and fell over. Very sad daffodils. I had these looking nice. They came from my brother's house and I plugged them in right before they started blooming. Realized they were white and I really liked them. I did get a little b-roll of them though while they were still blooming So I'll show you that now And those will be there forever now. They're go ahead and naturalize there on the end here. There are some uh, Gladiolas speckled in along the edge of the dahlia bed. I'm gonna come back here. So you see the three Thuja green giants On the back side Back here, there, between the thujas, there is a couple more dahlias, I believe, at the green stakes, your green flags, and then a smaller, smaller daffodil dahlia bed right here. I'm going to have to do something with this area, but I'm going to wait till we get that carport all finished up here. This is where we're putting in the foundation to the carport, laying the footer, and it's going to be the storage shed. On the front porch here, I do some some perennials in here. It's pretty much packed full of variety of perennials. I got a torch lily on the end, some hyacinths and daffodils speckled through, an alium in the middle, and a dahlia, a rainbow dahlia there on the corner. And then the hosta bed is around this side because it's the north end and it gets pretty much no sun at all. So this is where I put in a bunch of Hostas and ferns. There's a rhododendron here. This is a pink Holden, I believe. Yes, this is a Holden variety of rhododendron, which it is pink. Put two Love Lies Bleeding Hearts in here, but they were from Lowe's and the roots seem pretty soft, so I don't think I got those. They're probably dead. This is a purple rhododendron, which I have a rock on it to try and get that arm to root. We'll see what happens. 
around this pipe I have a still be on either side and a hosta in the front I believe one of the still be it's white a still be is still alive and this looks like a great hyacinth but I don't remember putting that in there we'll see what happens stick around This is the front bed where we have the red azalea. You can see there. There is a pink dianthus here and red knockout roses. I have a bed of gladiolas planted all through there. Speckled in is some tulips, some alium, and then a nice row of hyacinths. These pink hyacinths came from my brothers and they were doing good even though they were transplanted as they were still blooming. On the outside here we have two delphiniums, blue delphiniums, another rose trine, and the yucca. So this blooms red, white, and blue in the summer. Over along the front edge here we have more daffodils. These are looking a lot better than they were a couple days ago. These daffodils were all sad and drooped over just a couple days ago whenever we had some snow we had a couple days of snow here in april these are a nice double-headed daffodil there but we had some snow here the last couple days and it was cold started making everything look real bad here's my new trellis i built real proud of that thing and it got real cold down into about 19 degrees so a lot of stuff was looking pretty sad. So I had to wait a few days to get this property tour out to you with things looking a little better. Now I have some sedum right here. Where's the Sharon right there? And this is what I want to do here. I want to do like a tropical look with probably some canna lilies and elephant ears. So I have yellow cannas, I have red cannas, orange canna, and I'll plug in the elephant ears when it's time. But I'm gonna try and get some big leaves in there and some bright bold colors. Behind those daffodils you can see there's a big bed of lilies that need to be thinned down. There's a dahlia here that hopefully it's still alive. Threw some extra mulch on there. This is the front garden. So it is lined with Niger arborvitaes I believe. But they have caught a blight so most of them are dying. They're dying one by one, two by two actually. In front of those we have Rosa Sharon's. There's a couple spots of lilies in there. I have running down the inside of these stumps. I have some daffodils, hyacinths, and grape hyacinths running down all through there. So they'll naturalize and fill out eventually. The stumps are from some old Norway spruce we had here. But we had to take those out and now they're just stumps. So I tend to just put annuals all the way between those stumps to try and just cover them up but this mailbox trellis that i just got put in or i just put in built and put in myself has a clematis a little purple clematis i don't know the name of it because i got it from a friend's house but it's going to be its first year on this trellis so i'm real excited to see how that one turns out this beautiful specimen of a tree is another royal empress, Palawanian tomatosa. This is a two-year-old tree. So the one you saw before that was just a stick, that's what this thing looked at like this time last year. It branched out and that's how big the branches got. Some of those branches are eight to 10 feet long and the trunk is huge. For a two-year-old tree I grew from seed, that's a massive trunk. It is, bedded down here with some daffodils hyacinths that's a bit of grape hyacinths and I have a ring of six hostas going around the bottom of this because it has very large leaves about two feet across just one leaf so it casts some shade these are some rosa sharons and this gap here I'm probably going to put a big mes miscanthus grass or a pompous grass to fill that spot in this is one of the Norway spruce that's left over. It kind of just shot up from a root and we kept it, trying to keep it as like a large bonsai tree, I guess. Same with this oak. This oak here was just planted by a chipmunk or something. So we kept it and we are just pruning it. 
I guess just experiment trees. Coming into the property, we have a gold globe arborvitae, a red hydrangea, a red bud tree, and a blue hydrangea. This red bud tree was pulled out of my brother's house. He doesn't like anything flowering, but my grandma lived there first and she had a ton of things flowering up there. So as he ripped everything out, I tried to grab what I could. This was knocked over with a skid loader and then ran over twice with a skid loader. You can kind of see all the damage on the trunk. It's trying to heal, but it was right as it was blooming. So last year I did get to see a couple blooms on it once we got it transplanted here, but I'm hoping to get a nice healthy bloom out of it this year and it'll start branching out. Down at the base is some grape hyacinths. Just a little ring. Now this whole fence line goes into the perennial bed and it's just full of daffodils and lilies but pretty soon i'm gonna have to take them out move them into the yard a little bit and i'm gonna have to put an evergreen wall along this fence line to block out the neighbors first bush here is a scotch broom has nice pretty red flowers actually i think it's early summer we get those it's a nice different blooming flower it's not their traditional petals now the perennial bed is kind of balanced it's not symmetrical, but it's balanced. There is a Rosa Sharon on either side. And then there's some irises and alium planted here in this little triangle. As we come in, we'll have some sedum and hillabores, hillabores, Lenten rose on either side. Oh, there's a bee on that one. There's two bees on it. Three. Nice. On the back side is four Thuja Green Giant Arborvitaes, just starting out two years old. In the center is some more Helobores and a Valley Pyrus Rote, Valley Pyrus. And this is mostly gladiolas. There's a barberry and some lilies in the back. There's gladiolas, spiderwort, crocus, and crocosmia. Down here is some foxglove. And there's a daisy back there that I got free from a lady in La Trobe that was giving away some free plants. Down here we have more Lenten Rose, some hibiscus. Yes, there is a hibiscus right here. And it's circled with some hyacinth. There's a golden spiria right here that turned red from the frost. And behind the spiria is a white and a and a purple Leatrice. Just in front of the stump I have purple and white carnation and behind the stump are three different types of lilies. Just beside those we have another barberry to keep the balance but over here I think this is a Cleopatra lily that I planted last year beginning of the year but it never actually grew. I had three here but it looks like one is taking hold. Just behind that Cleopatra lily I planted uh, hollyhocks from seed and they didn't do anything last year. They stayed about that size and did nothing but it looks like they're still green so they might have made it through the winter which that'll be nice. To keep the consistency of balance I have sedum and two halobores on this side with another Rosa Sharon. Look how big this patch of daffodils are. That is a beautiful set of daffodils. Just massive. It's a little blown over from the wind, but it's looking a lot better from the snowy days we had the other day. Horrible snow. Bad time of year. All these are daffodils and lilies filling in the fr uh, fence line here. We find another red or another rhododendron. This one happens to be red. It is a Nova Zembia. Got a little bit of burn damage on it, but this is its first year. At the end of the fence line here, we have a large rhododendron, which is a pink color. It needs to get pruned this year. Just beside that is an Austrian stone pine, which I pruned up the bottom last year. It had a lot of dead, dead on it, so I had to get that out. Deep in there you can see a lilac tree, 
which was struggling so we had to prune that back pretty far last year a bunch of smaller lilacs growing up in here with some yuccas i got to get these yuccas out into the landscape so they can actually get some sun and grow there's a blighted blue colorado blue spruce back in here next to two beautiful hemlock trees and another large pink rhododendron tucked in here which also will need pruned this year backing out we'll see this nice white azalea right behind a white dogwood still that dogwood's been in i think three years now so i'm waiting for that to bloom for the first time and then a nice dwarf alberta spruce right here these trees are so nice to look at they look the same all year long i just like them make our way through this hemlock and alaska weeping cedar and we come into the garden area this was where my dad had the garden originally so this is where it stays his garden was mainly just behind this fence right there it was just that much area i kind of expanded it out that way towards the field and then i expanded it this far about four four feet in this way and i put up this fence for a tomato trellis i grow my giant pumpkin on the other side i grow all the veggies on this side and then we built two raised beds this one is for all the asparagus that's just asparagus in there and i plugged in a little bit of garlic on this side I'll try and you guys can watch that spring garlic planting video. It actually worked very well, so it's a no fuss way to plant your garlic. Anyway, this is the next bed. This is where I grow most of my root vegetables, but there's also some garlic along the outside there. It is almost time to get this thing direct planted, so keep a lookout for that video. Subscribe down below, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified whenever I get that video out. Over here, next to Puppy, Oh, puppy's playing with a golf ball. Hold on. He's a spoiled pup, so he gets what he wants. Go, pup. And it's usually a golf ball or a volleyball. This is what we used to call the butterfly ring before my garden encroached on it and really took the ring shape out of it. I have a bee balm here and a coreopsis, I believe, on the other side. In that black ring, we have an elephant tree. Hopefully it's surviving. I put that big piece of uh, plastic pipe around it for get the heat. Plus I mulched it and I that ring was full of straw and now it's packed down a little bit. So hopefully that's still alive under there. In the center you can see there's some lilies there and some lilies coming up by that flag. Right behind the white pipe is the butterfly bush itself which it's coming back nicely. We had to dock it back pretty far for it to actually start blooming again. I think it bloomed a couple last year. Around the outside, we have garlic planted. You'll be able to see that from the spring garlic video. Go watch that. Just inside the garlic, I have crocus planted about every step. And around that crocus is dahlias planted all the way around, multicolored dahlias. They didn't get a great bloom last year. They got a really slow start, but I'm hoping for a better set this year since they're already in the ground ready to go. I think that's about all we have in the butterfly bush ring. You can see the stalks there. I tend to throw in some sunflowers everywhere I can. I always throw in a sunflower. I'll pop. That's what you want. That's what he wants. So this is where we have our weather machine. We call this the rock mound for obvious reasons. It's full of some lilies on the end there. We speckled in some tulips, as you can see they're coming in. And then it's mostly irises along the front here. We got a purple one, yellow, red, and then I believe the rest here are yellow. There's a lily planted in there. It's a purple lily. And I can't remember the name. I doubt I have the tag here. But that is a purple lily, and it looks beautiful whenever it's blooming. I think there's another iris plugged up there because I can see a tag. 
there should be alium all through here i have asiatic lilies on the back side about every two steps so four or five batches of those orange lilies so this really lights up in the summer right when it's iris blooming season this is a pretty bright colored area i think what we're gonna do is get leave all the rocks around the outside wall here but we're all the ones on the mound i think we're gonna take out they're just getting a little cluttered oh there's hostas all through here too but it is getting cluttered with the stones so if we take all the stone out i'll be able to fit more plants in that's the plan right here you can see some leftover stumpage at the base we have some self-sown volunteer roses but they don't seem to bloom so i want to get rid of those right here on this pad we put our we usually put our uh, bird bath so that'll be coming out here soon it is completely surrounded by hillabores and a beautiful da uh, daffodil again this thing is planted so close to this maple tree I'm gonna have to get this out this year because look how close that is that's that's in there so that's probably real deep too I'd guess it's at least 10 inches down where the bulbs are so that's gonna be hard to get out of there but I don't want the maple just taking it over and killing them so that'll be a project later on there's a bunch of english ivy and a variegated winter creeper i believe in there just taking over it's a fight every year to tame that you can see there's a big empty spot here and i'll show you the video now of all the debris from the storm we had we had about 45 mile an hour winds that came and blew this hemlock over we had to get it all cut up and burned so now it's a nice big empty spot that I have to make more plans for, which is okay. I'm thinking right here next to the bird bath, I'm gonna put a walkway, probably uh, on either end, line it with brick, and maybe stone in the middle with mulch around either end. What do you think? Yeah, we'll see. Stick around. On the back side is a arborvitae. I believe this is a golden globe. It's not real golden. We got a red ant problem, so that's red ant powder spread there. Ants everywhere. But yeah, there's some gold to this thing. A little bit of gold on this gold globe arborvitae. And on the sun side, got some irises underneath it. This over here, we have two Gila bores. This is where I planted my rhubarb, right behind there. So hopefully that'll come up, we'll see. This is a Chinese snowball viburnum that we pulled out of my brother's house. So this is just budding out. I don't even think it did much last year. We'll see what happens this year. It was a big root ball for the small amount of plant we had. Look at that stump. Look at that stump. That thing was big. Just behind that we have a lavender or a lilac tree. Sorry. Does that thing have buds on it? There's buds. Hopefully that'll bloom. That'll be nice. I haven't seen one of our lilacs bloom in a while. They've just been really struggling and dying back. Here is the hemlock we didn't lose. There was one just this size right beside it. Good thing when it fell it didn't crush anything. Like a big rhododendron planted three feet away from this hemlock. Right here we have a row of lilies because I have a ton of lilies and I needed a place to put them. Underneath there Underneath that mature burning bush is a bunch of daffodils. They can come out. I should probably get those out of there, but they're staying for now. Here is this beautifully sad forsythia. I'll show you a video. We had it looking real good before that cold came and really messed a lot of things up, but forsythia really took a beating. I like forsythia. It's real bright, nice early spring color really ethereal if you keep it loose and not really light not like a i like the forsythia whenever it's nice and loose and blown in the wind i don't like the tight hedges that some people prune them into oh we walked past one of the yuccas that i transplanted this one gets more sun so you can see it's doing pretty good this mountain ash tree has been struggling its whole life you can see down here where it's all rotted out it's been trying to put up new trunks every year but it never seems to get to blooming state 
Right beside it is another dwarf Alberta spruce, which is just a good winter structure. Man, they're just so beautiful. Bees love them. Look at that bee. Oh, he's gone. But yeah, be careful because the bees will nest in there. Hey, puppy. Along our driveway, I have sedum, lily, hosta, lily, hosta, lily, hosta, lily, hosta, lily, hosta, lily, hosta, sedum. So that'll bloom probably midsummer. And I think it'll start looking good. Some purples and oranges. This is a red maple. It is a very dark burgundy red. Very dark. Almost purple. But here we have a daffodil, obviously. And some blue fescue planted here. Because I wanted some type of plant here. But with the dogs, you can't have anything that's a little delicate. Because puppy likes to step on things, don't you? yeah so those can handle the stepping on from dogs and peeing and so far they've been doing pretty good once i prune those up they'll be looking ready for spring over here we have all my extra gourds drying out that i didn't get to yet these were just sitting out for decoration and now they're sitting out until they dry enough like this one so you can rattle and get the seeds out of it and grow them again but some of them are still pretty heavy. Yeah, and they don't have the she seeds ready. There is a dahlia in there, a hosta and a daffodil, but they're not doing anything. Inside our sidewalk here, we have a nine bark. This nine bark has been doing good for a long time, but last year it just got this weird mold on it. So there's some dead branches in there and you pruned out. I have some lilies, daffodils, hyacinths. There's this little periwinkle. There's a periwinkle purple vine in here that looks pretty nice. Next to that angel statue. And then, ooh, this daffodil is from my brother's house. And I just shoved it straight into the ground because it was ready to bloom. And I don't have a daffodil like this yet. That's going to be a nice blooming daffodil, white with the orange center. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm excited about that one. I did not know that was that color. Oh, this one's open. Let me see. Yeah, that's a nice color. There's also three hostas in the back. Here we have the poppy bed with some hyacinths in the back, some crocus in the middle. And look at all the germination on those poppies. These things are prolific reseeders. And these ones are mainly yellow poppies. I did try and get some other ones in here. There's a tulip. And here is a Myrtle's Folly Giant Dahlia. Sorry about my lighting here. This is a Myrtle's Folly Dahlia. And then I hope these are red poppies because I tried to direct sow them and it looks like something's coming up. So hopefully those are red poppies and they can start direct seeding all through here and the whole thing will fill up with color. Ooh, puppy. Hi buddy. Hi buddy. I bring into the patio here where I have my tree nursery. That's where I keep them from getting frosted. This is my brother's Japanese maple and his giant sequoia I have for him. There's some willows, some other trees here. I won't go over them all, but these are getting ready to go out into the landscape. It's another rhod rhododendron. This one's white, I believe. And then we have some tulips over here. We got some lows. They're just opening up. That's a beautiful color there. Those are both really nice. Over here, I think is a dead mandevilla. But here I potted up my kiwi tree, and that is a an aronia berry. And I picked up a couple purple irises. Can't beat a dollar. Come on, four irises for a dollar. Jeez. Here is my Easter decoration I did because I was watching Garden Answer, and she did one with she did one with uh, 
corkscrew willows and I don't have any corkscrew willows so I just used my lilac tree and spray painted them white. I think it turned out very well. What do you think? Yeah, same. This will be going in the front where we have the dead thuja, or dead arborvitaes. This one is going to replace that. Here I have a Cleveland pear. I've always wanted a Cleveland pear here for a couple years. This is a early spring bloomer. Nice white puffy uh, flowers. This is the rose bed and it has a orange, red, yellow, and orange rose. Second orange rose is a fragrant rose. That's why it's there as well. But this is the most fragrant part of the property right now because of all those hyacinths. Got all those hyacinths for a dollar, three for a dollar last year after Easter. And it was a great deal because they are looking and smelling amazing. Right here I divided up some daisy, perennial daisy. I don't know what they look like yet because I got them from a nice lady in Latrobe. But I've got them potted up here so whenever they are ready, they can go into the landscape as well. A lot of times during the year I use my dog pool as a watering device. So these are the two golden, golden rider Leland cypresses I'm planning on putting up behind the barn. One's, one looks like it's struggling so I'm keeping it in water trying to get it to show some life again. Since I'm by the ramp, because puppy needed to switch games on me and get a new ball, this is my lavender I have here in this bed. And I have a hosta flanking it on either side. Except, what is that? Looks like a tulip. This hosta has spider ward on the inside. And then that one's a plain hosta. Hosta up here. Day lily right there. Nice orange flower. So there's purple oranges and purple... And then I have a, I believe amaryllis bulbs I got from my aunt. The amaryllis? No, I think they're calla lily. I think they're calla lily I have dotted in here. Hopefully they survived because they are in between my irises that are on the back side. And then these snapdragons actually survived the winter, which I wasn't expecting them to. I wasn't gonna have them here again this year, but since they survived, I have a hard time of cutting them out. So they're gonna stay. I'll just put more snapdragons in here to make it look like it's gonna work. And then I'll probably layer the bottom with Vista petunias. Some nice wave petunias that'll fill out the whole area. This is our main area around the fire pit here. So this is the red bank. We call this the red bank because we put red mulch on it and it's a bank yeah clever down here in the corner we have a daffodil again so i love daffodils try and put them everywhere then there's two hostas maybe three hostas right here and a red canna lily that lily should be going out front where i want to put some tropical and what is this it almost looks like butterfly bush that does look like butterfly bush shouldn't be there that's a hosta butterfly bush coming out of a hosta it's strange let's keep an eye on that some asiatic lilies in the back because we tried to take them all out and we didn't get them all along the whole rock wall up there are tulips and by that stone there are some yellow gladiolus in this broken pot here i have stuffed into the bank so it doesn't look too broken what do you think it's nice ain't it yeah on either side of that, I believe, are calla lilies. Flower power calla lilies. Along the top, we also have some daffodils. And then right here, I have my lupin. This thing, it bloomed prolifically for six weeks last year. Just would not stop. Huge 20-inch tall colas, purple flowers. And then when it was finally done, it put off one pink flower, which was just, just a great show last year. Along the top here we have it completely filled up with Asiatic lilies. A couple different colors, I think red and yellow. And then I have a columbine right here, some daffodils speckled through, patch of tulips, English ivy, 
bunch of tulips. And I believe there's a gomfrina up in here. <laughs> up in here. Yep, purple gomfrina. And then this is that plant that nobody can pronounce. The Erygium planum blue hobbit sea holly. Say that five times fast. Since my cold frame was a new addition this year, we had to rearrange the rocks a little bit. So we put this little cove here and a dinner plate dahlia went in there. I'll take a quick peek into the cold frame here for the sneak peek of the update. Oh yeah, things are germinating. I also got my automatic window opener on. And it works. I believe that's just about everything. I'm sitting here with some of my bulbs that I didn't get into the landscape. So I just went ahead and put them in pots. There's some tulips, some alium, and some hyacinths in here. I think I have a water lily and a lilac wonder. So hopefully they'll still come up, but I was supposed to get them in, in the fall, but yeah, I got as many as I could in. I forgot, over by the dog pool, I have this bed that I kind of just framed out of wood and uh, concrete blocks filled up with dirt. And these cinder blocks hold the face on. I do have a board I put across here for a bench. It'll be a nice sitting bench out here, actually. But inside here, I plant vines. The vines will climb up this entire wall all the way to the roof line probably like they usually do and uh, i have a nice screen shady screen for the patio in there plus a lot of nice color for the hummingbirds and that keeps them keeps all the bees and hummingbirds close there's also in here is a bunch of gladiolas and i did get some poppy seeds to germinate i threw a mixture of poppy seeds in here and they are you can see right there the poppy seeds are germinating and coming up so it'll be a mix of colors right there red yellows and oranges all right i want to thank you for coming along with me today as we did our very first property tour we'll be doing a property tour every month i hope so go ahead and subscribe down below if you like what you're seeing hit that notification bell so you can see when the tour comes out because i was going to get it out at the first of the month actually but it didn't work out that way because we had a heck of a snowstorm and it made everything look ugly so i actually filmed a whole hour long property tour that nobody will ever see because i just refilmed it right now because things didn't actually look that good and i needed to make it a little shorter so thanks for coming along stay tuned for the next one